This is the tenth video in a series about complex arithmetic methods and geometric interpretations. In the last few videos we've been talking about complex multiplication. In this video we're going to focus mostly on complex division, but before I do so, let's review the most important couple facts that we've learned recently about complex multiplication. This equation right here says the modulus of the product of two complex numbers, z1 and z2, equals the product of their individual moduli, the modulus of z1 times the modulus of z2. In other words, the distance of the product to the origin is the product of the distances of each of the factors to the origin. And the argument, or an argument, of the product, z1 times z2, is the sum of the arguments of the individual things that are being multiplied, the individual factors. Though this equation does have some ambiguity in that we need to specify particular values or particular possible ranges for the argument. Arguments are only well defined up to multiples of 2 pi, adding multiples of 2 pi. We'll come back to worrying about that later. This time we want to focus on complex division. And in, in, it's best in trying to motivate complex division if we start by trying to think about what it would mean for a complex number, a given complex number a plus bi, to have what's called a multiplicative inverse. Some other complex number that, such that when I multiply it by that other complex number, I get the multiplicative identity, which is still 1, by the way, one, which would equal 1 plus 0i is the multiplicative identity if you multiply 1 times any other complex number a plus bi you do get back that other complex number a plus bi and you can definitely test that it's it's clearly true again the the goal here is for a given complex number a plus bi is there some other complex number x plus yi such that when you multiply it times a plus bi you get 1 well this is an algebra problem what would this mean if we multiply out the expression on the left? We would get a times y minus, excuse me, a times x minus b times y plus i times a times y plus b times x. And that would have to equal 1 plus 0i. That would result in giving us a system of two linear equations in the unknowns x and y. The first one being ax minus by equals 1 and the second one being, if I rearrange, bx plus ay equaling 0. Now you could use some linear algebra to solve this, put it in a matrix. You also can just do some substitution. I won't assume you know linear algebra at the moment. You can, for example, take the second equation, and if you assume that a is non-zero, which I will, for the moment, assume, then you can solve it uh, for y for x in terms for y in terms of x. Let's see here. Just make double checking to make sure everything is good. All right. So if you solve that second equation for y in terms of x, what you'll get is y will be negative b over a times x. That can then be substituted into the first equation to get ax minus b times negative b over a times x, which will ultimately give you positive b squared over a times x equals 1. You could factor out a left an x on the left side and then divide by a plus b squared over a, again all assuming a is not zero. I should probably add that in here. I'm assuming a if a is not zero. So here this would give you give us x equals one over a plus b squared over a. Again, assuming a is not zero. Now multiply the top and the bottom of that fraction, of that compound fraction by a, and you'll get a over a squared plus b squared. And now 
take that expression and substitute it into here to find y. And y will equal, the a's will cancel, you'll get a negative b over a squared plus b squared. So evidently, x plus i y will equal, when a is not zero at least, a over a squared plus b squared plus or minus i times b over a squared plus b squared. Let's test it out on Mathematica. See what happens if I type it in like this. Let's see if Mathematica simplifies that. It doesn't. <clears throat> Not as it is. Let's try putting our complex expand in front of that. Okay, um, it gives us this. This doesn't look like the number one, does it? But it actually is. If you add these fractions, they already have a common denominator. You'll get an a squared plus b squared over a squared plus b squared. It will equal one. I don't know if I simplify that. If it'll simplify it to one, yes it does. Okay, so evidently this is working when a is not zero. What if a equals zero? Well, it turns out, I'll let you think about it, that you'll still get the same answer as long as b is not zero. The only time this doesn't work is if both a and b equal zero, because then you'd be dividing by zero in this expression, and we don't want to do that. Zero is the only complex number, just like it's the only real number, without a multiplicative inverse. So, it looks like what we've done here will work in general. So for example, if I want to find the, the multiplicative inverse of the complex number, I'll call it z, uh, 5 plus 7i, let's call that z1. Evidently, by this formula, it's going to be a, 5, over 5 squared plus 7 squared. 25 plus 49, which will be 74, minus i times b over 74, 7 over 74. Let's see if it simplifies it here. Yes, it does simplify it right away there without using simplify or complex expand. Those two numbers are multiplicative inverses of each other. Another way to check that would be to do 1 over z1. And notice that you get the same thing as z2. That is the same as z2. So it looks like we've come up with a method to find the reciprocal of a complex number. And this uh, tells us um, one possible way of, mul of dividing two complex numbers, which I'll go into in more depth in the next video. If you wanted to take... Um, let's make a z3 and you wanted to take z1 divided by z3 it should be the same thing as z1 times the reciprocal of z3 the multiplicative inverse of z3 you could do it like this in Mathematica or like this oops wrong one z3 Either way would obviously give you the same answer, and we can double check that. I'll go into more detail about this in the next video. We'll also talk about the complex conjugate idea in the next video that will help us come up with a more efficient method for finding this, and also a method where you don't have to, have to memorize this formula for the reciprocal of a complex number.